As, uh, as required, I will begin with my financial disclosures. And I pray that by the next IVHM meeting, I will have a financial disclosure, but at present, nothing. It's been said that one picture is worth a thousand words, and indeed it is. But for HCV elimination, I think we can say that one country is worth a thousand speeches. And that country uh, pick out is Egypt, who's already demonstrated uh, very well the possibilities for viral elimination. And I'll get back to that later on. Just wanted to review briefly the, the origins, the whole HCV story. It began in uh, the late 1960s with prospective studies at the NIH, which showed this inordinately high uh, hepatitis incidence based on ALT levels exceeding 30%. In 1970, we were able to adopt an all volunteer donor system and introduce the first generation test for hepatitis B surface antigen. And those combined measures led to a dramatic reduction in rates from 33% down to around 10%. In 1973, a sensitive surface antigen test was developed by Abbott. We went back to these samples and somewhat surprisingly found that only about 25 to 30% of these post-transfusion hepatitis cases were related to HBV. And then, so thus we had this non-B entity that was totally undefined. In 1975, Feinstone, Kapikian, and Purcell, shown from your right to left, uh, uh, discovered the hepatitis A virus using immune electron microscopy. And we went back and tested uh, all the non-B cases and not a single one was related to hepatitis A virus. And it's then that we brilliantly de deduced that if these were not hepatitis A or hepatitis B, we'd call it non-A, non-B. And we did that only because uh, we didn't really have, we hadn't yet proven that there was a virus. And if so, we didn't know how many. So the next steps were transmission to the chimp model. And this was highly successful in showing that the non-A, non-B aging was indeed transmissible uh, from patients who had acute or chronic non-A, non-B hepatitis, and importantly also from asymptomatic blood donors who had been implicated in hepatitis transmission. While still trying to find a specific assay, we looked at the clinical aspects of, of non-A, non-B, found that while most cases had only mild to moderate disease, the 10% had cirrhosis at the beginning, and then at the end, after follow-up biopsies, we found that eight out of 39 subjects or 20% had developed cirrhosis. And of those eight, three died of liver failure and three others had severe liver disease when they died of the underlying uh, heart disease. Uh, and this dispelled the notion that non-A, non-B was just a benign transaminitis showing that it was a disease that could lead to hepatic fibrosis, cirrhosis, and liver-related death. The big breakthrough came in 1987-ish, uh, uh, when Michael Houghton's group at Chiron uh, cloned the non-A, non-B agent uh, by extracting RNA from uh, pelleted uh, uh, infectious material. Uh, oops. Well, a step was missing here, but basically they, uh, they take, extracted the RNA, reverse transcribed it. And importantly, I don't know why this dropped out of the slide, they use this GT11 expression vector, which would take the RNA, the coded message, and not only transfer the gene, but express any protein coded for by the gene. They then put that material, uh, infected E. coli with this, with this uh, vector uh, and then screened uh, on the assumption that there would be antibody present, which was uh, no antibody had yet been discovered at that time. The story goes that they uh, screened 6 million clones <laughs> before a single clone was found positive. 
and uh, they were then able to uh, uh, re-express that clone, uh, find a small fragment, a uh, small antigenic segment, uh, and eventually developed a antibody assay. It's a picture of Michael Houghton at the time he won the Alaska Award uh, for this uh, endeavor and subsequently he shared the Nobel Prize. <laughs> Once we had the hepatitis C test, this is the whole 30 year story of HCV uh, beginning from what I showed you on the left various interventions uh, to try to decrease the incidence, the introduction of testing, first generation testing in 1990, and second generation testing in 1992. <clears throat> and by 1997, we had reached zero post-transfusion hepatitis. And we've now looked for another two decades and have not seen any cases of hepatitis B or hepatitis C. Uh, the next big step was the introduction of uh, direct acting antivirals in uh, around 2011. Uh, so we now have drugs that can in, give us 95 to 100 percent cure rates. Uh, and they're just amazing drugs that can be taken orally and with almost no side effects. So the future of HCV. Uh, really with cure rates approaching 100%. From this time forward, once HCV infection is identified, no one should develop cirrhosis or die from hepatitis C sequelae. However, there are impediments to this goal in that only 20 to 40% of carriers have actually been identified, uh, that there's been limited access to treatment or that is getting better in the developed world. Uh, and the high cost of drugs has been has been a definite impediment. Uh, those costs are coming down. Uh, so to triangulate uh, the triangulation of HCV elimination involves first massive global screening with rapid assays, rapid and sensitive assays. Uh, these are already developed to some extent and can be improved. Uh, but the important point is to link that screening, whether it be in the field, in the office, anywhere, in the clinic, in the prison, to link that rapid screening with the immediate delivery of DAAs. So before you lose the patient, uh, in the next 15 minutes, you can tell them whether they are antigen or virus positive or not. Give them the first month or two months supply of DAAs and expect that 95 and probably close to 100% will be cured. The main element of this triangulation is the political, corporate, and moral will to make it happen. Uh, and although this is a daunting undertaking, uh, there's already evidence that it can happen. This was a slide uh, by Homi Rozavi uh, saying that as of 2020, only 15 countries were on track to eliminate HCV by the WHO guide, WHO goal of, of uh, elimination by 2030. That can be looked at as a negative, but I look at it as a positive that 15 countries have already shown uh, that they can implement this test and treat strategy, it includes Australia, Austria, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Egypt, and, and many other countries uh, who are already on track for this elimination profile. Egypt is really the best example of this. The Ministry of Health in Egypt said we should screen everybody 18 years of age or older, with a target population of 62.5 million people. And we should do this within one year <coughs> and then provide treatment to all those with HCV viremia. This is a table which is probably hard to read, but just go down here. They screened 48 million plus people uh, for antibody, found 2,229,000 to be uh, antibody positive, representing about 4.6% of the population. They then did viral testing. And by September of 2019, 91% 
of 1.148 million people who had viremia had already started treatment. And that number I'm sure is better at, at the present time. So this test and treat strategy uh, can be done, uh, has been amazingly done in Egypt and other countries. And I think it's very encouraging. Now, you have to remember that HCV elimination is only in its infancy. But the future growth and strength of this effort, I think, is assured. Uh, so all we need to do is we need to hang together in our common goal. This will take a while, uh, but can be done probably even without a vaccine, although the vaccine would certainly speed the effort. So I wish you all uh, keep going. And uh, I believe this is an achievable end. Thank you very much.